So. Okay, so good evening, everyone, and uh, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us, especially on uh, such short notice. Uh, my name is Roland Sang. Um, I'm actually the helping lead the development of this new and exciting uh, spirit, spirit of Technology program, which has been carefully uh, developed under the same principles and quality as our amazing Spirit of Math program. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing a, a few of our, our fellow team members here. Uh, firstly is uh, Christy Langan. Uh, she is the Director of Innovation and she oversees the development of this new and exciting Spirit of Technology program. Uh, welcome, Christy. Uh, I also have the honor of introducing Miss um, uh, Busab, our Grade 3 Spirit of Technology curriculum developer and teacher, and also Mr. Dagger, our Grade 5 Spirit of Technology curriculum developer and teacher. Uh, he will be leading us uh, very shortly um, into our first uh, presentation uh, regarding our Grade 5 online virtual curriculum and program. Uh, before I pass this over to Mr. Dagger, um, I just want to mention that as some of you have been doing so already, uh, feel free to post your post and or type your questions into the chat. Um, we also, at the end of each presentation, there's two of them. It'll be grade five, followed by grade three. At the end of each session, there will be a quick question and answer period where you can post your questions and or if you'd like to speak out, you can raise your hand and uh, we'll let you chime in uh, into the chat. OK, so thank you very much. Thanks for your patience and I hope this is really informative. And again, feel free to ask us uh, any questions you may have. So Mr. Dagger, it's all yours. Thank you, Roland. That was an amazing intro. Um, so let's get started with our uh, agenda for our grade five curriculum and what we're going to go over tonight. So uh, first thing we're going to talk about is why Spirit of Technology, why enroll your your, your child in Spirit of Technology, uh, what we're going to learn in the uh, 2022 curriculum in the new year. And uh, because it is a shorter um, semester, so, so to speak, we have about 22 lessons. Um, the different types of drills we do in grade five, an example problem uh, that they might um, exhibit uh, in one of their classes um, an assignment question and uh, at the end we'll answer all the questions you may type in the chat and you'll have an opportunity to ask your own questions. So why uh, enroll in Spirit of Technology? Um, first thing is logical thinking. Um, with, with technology and computer science and electronics, uh, logical thinking is a very important skill uh, to have and you develop it quite quickly once you start to learn how to program because um, I like to explain a, a computer is just like the best listener in the world to a fault. It will do exactly what you tell it to do and only what you tell it to do. So uh, sometimes you have to logically think through the problem and uh, think about how you can approach a certain situation. Um, and uh, the second thing is inspiring cur curiosity and learning to adapt or constantly learn to adapt. Um, with technology, it's it's to most of us, it's just a black box. When you look at a computer, you have no idea what's going in going in inside. And learning just the components, the simple basics of how does a computer think? Why does it want to act a certain way? How does uh, a program pop up on my screen? All these little different things uh, are something that we could learn in in a spirit of technology class. And of course, everyone knows, uh, especially nowadays. Uh, a lot of work from home, a lot of digital uh, uh, digiti digitization. Uh, we prepare for the digital age. Uh, it's, this is what the future is looking and it's trending really quickly towards an online experience. Um, and Spirit Tech, it's great to look at your child right at the beginning of it. Um, and that number three and number four linked together, uh, technology is the future. Um, all of our classes now not all of our classes, but uh, during the pandemic, we had a lot of online classes. Uh, schools were online, uh, a lot of work from home. Um, all these need apps, they need developers, they need uh, technicians, IT. Uh, these jobs are in demand right now, and they're probably going to be trending that way into the future as well, as more and more companies realize they could have the benefit of uh, working from home. Um, and since we are uh, an online class, uh, there is no need to commute to our campus, uh, and you could just at, at your home, just uh, join the class on your laptop and you're ready to go. Uh, number six, jobs, jobs, jobs. Of course, uh, highest uh, highly paid careers in technology are right out of the bat uh, in university. Um, computer engineers, electrical engineers, computer scientists, programmers, IT technicians, all these are very high paid jobs right out of the bat from 
uh, with just a bachelor's degree. You don't need to go into a master's or a PhD right out, right out of graduation. You can start getting a lot of money. Um, and just like our spirit of math um, curriculum, group communication. We like to promote uh, cooperation and communication amongst uh, your peers and um, amongst your teachers um, and chat rooms, emails, all that stuff so that we could help each other out. So uh, what does the grade five curriculum look like? So our current plan right now is uh, we start off with Ohm's law and circuit building. And what that means is just electricity. How does it work? How do you calculate it? How do you build a circuit? How do you work around that? What's the battery? What's the wire? How do you connect it to? How do you power light bulb? All that basic stuff. How do you calculate current? How do you calculate voltage? Uh, that's the that's at the very beginning at the start because that's the core foundation and building block into our next unit. And the next unit is the fun unit. Uh, one of my favorite units is the Arduino prototyping. So an Arduino is something that we call a microcontroller. It is a little mini computer. I have one right here. It, it essentially uh, allows you to program it and you could program different components externally. And we'll show an example later on in the program, uh, in, uh, in tonight, in tonight's uh, uh, program. Um, and it links the, uh, the circuit building and the Ohm's law together so that you're able to do a lot more things. So for example, an Arduino can make an LED light blink on and off as a, just a simple example. And as you can see uh, later on, we're going to show I'm going to show you an example of an assignment question where it involves Morse code. So using Morse code and making a buzzer beep in such a way. Um, so some different uh, different components that we go over in Arduino are digital inputs and outputs, analog inputs and outputs, and uh, some of the problem sets and assignments question. Uh, and then finally, we uh, at the end of the year, we go into data analysis. So this is just like organizing and linking different spread spreadsheet pages together. So get, having all your data on one page and then having a graph on the other page and uh, using that data to plot that graph um, and uh, making different correlations. Uh, so if you see a, a different trend, some sort on, on the graph, what does that mean? How to read that and uh, what could you come to a, as a conclusion? Um, and then we also plan to have a research assignment where the students will have an ability uh, an opportunity to collect data and graph it onto Excel. Uh, so some of the drills that we go over in Arduino, um, or in grade five rather, is the first one is a resistor relay drill. Um, so a resistor is a comp electrical component that we use quite often in Arduino. Um, and each one, each resistor has different colored bands on it. And um, on those bands, uh, it tells you the value of the resistor. Um, so this relay drill allows uh, the students to become familiar with reading them and become quick at identifying the value uh, without having looking at a table and uh, wasting some time on that. Another uh, another dr drill that we do is the Arduino syntax drill. And as you can see, this is on the top right corner over here. Uh, so students will be given different components. Uh, for example, they'll be given two temperature sensors, two DC buzzers, then they'll be given one LED, photoresistor, DC motor, and a push button. And the, the object of this drill is to, in five minutes, program the Arduino in order to set up all the pins, and whether they're input and output, or digital, digital and analog. This allows the students to practice with the Arduino syntax, because Arduino is very new to the students, especially those who did grade three and four is something a little different from we, what we did before. So this allows them to have some famil familiarity with the program before they even start programming in Arduino. So this is actually done near the beginning of the uh, of the school year. So that way, when we do hit our Arduino uh, unit, they are ready and they know and familiar with the code and how to how to start the program. Finally, there is a breadboard wiring. Now a breadboard is a kind of like a circuit board over here and it allows you to t connect different components together. Um, so for example, you'll be given a circuit diagram on the left-hand side over here. And uh, now some of these might be foreign to uh, some of you. Some of these uh, might be familiar to some of you. Uh, so for example, we have a battery over here connected to, this is what it is a resistor and this is an LED. And um, the object of this drill is to wire the circuit diagram on the breadboard 
in order for it to turn on. So pin 11, for example, will connect to the resistor and so on and so forth. This allows the students to be familiar with uh, wiring a breadboard and familiar with um, just how a breadboard works because breadboards could be tough when you first start with it. So here's an example problem in a lesson that we do in grade five. So this is during our Arduino unit. Um, and this will be the students will be given about 30 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes in class to work with their with their group members in order to solve for it. And they'll have a physical Arduino. Now we're online, it's going to be slightly different, but they would have a physical Arduino in our in person class and they'll have to figure this out. So the co the Corporation of Nice Things has selected you for their next project, creating a nocturnal illumination device, the NID. Below are the project requirements. One LED turns on when it's dark but stays off when it's bright. You must use an Arduino to program the LED and sensor. So quickly the students have to, they read this, they know their task, work with each other, try to figure out, okay, what's the question asking us? What are we trying to do? What components can we use? We have an Arduino, this is what we learned before. We learned what an if statement is, we learned uh, what an LED is, how to wire an LED. We, we just learned about different types of sensors. So now what sensors do I need? Okay, the lights turn off, what sensors? The next light, maybe I could use that and so on and so forth. So this is a train of thought that they'll be thinking and working with their partners or with their group members in order to solve for this. And here is a uh, Arduino assignment question. OK, so this is one of uh, this is actually near the beginning of our uh, Arduino unit, and this is in our first problem set. So um, Morse code is a form of early communication where each letter is represented by either a dash, a long beep, or a dot, a short beat. Find the Morse code for each letter in SOT by searching online and then code the buzzer to buzz SOT in Morse code. Dashes must be three quarters of a second long. Dots might, must be one quarter of a second long. And you have to have 0.1 seconds between each dot and dash and one second between each letters. So quickly, they're given all the requirements for the question. One thing they have to do beforehand that's not given to them is search what is the Morse code for S what is the most code for, for O and for T? Um, so they go online, they research it, and they figure it out uh, quickly. Uh, once you Google it, you'll figure out that S is dash, dash, dash. Uh, o is, sorry, dot, dot, dot. O is dash, 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 and T is just a long dash. Um, and I have uh, some code over here. Uh, given by a student, I just copied and pasted it into my Arduino right here. Um, and so here's the Arduino right here. Now it, the buzzer is going to get a little bit loud. So they're, they're encouraged to uh, to try to wire the buzzer themselves to make sure that it works. And that way they could see their code working as well. So I'm just going to plug it in. Uh, yeah, it might, the buzzer might get a little loud. So you might want to you might want to lower your volume just a little bit. Um, so here this is what we use to code the Arduino. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different code that we will go over in class and exactly what each line does before they even attempt this problem. So this is one of my students exam uh, code that I copied from their assignment and just posted it over here. So now I'm just going to click upload. Oops, connected to the wrong pin. So that was the S. That was the O. That was a T. And then it restarts from the beginning. And this is just one of the examples that we did in our. Uh, in our class uh, in person. And uh, that's about it. Uh, thank you for your time. And this is a uh, opportunity to ask some questions and we'll be gladly. Uh, we'll be happy to answer them. It seems like there's some great questions already in in the chat. Uh, Please jump in, Mr. Edgar, uh, if, if you can as well. Uh, the first one is a uh, quick question. Is this program for grade six as well? Uh, so for right now we're offering grades four and five virtually online. Um, that being said, we have had and we do have a number of grade six classes in the grade five program, especially if they don't have a lot of technology experience in in the past. I think there's quite a bit of material um, that they can still learn to. But again, to be very clear, it is targeted for grade five, uh, but we do have grade six. We've even had grade seven students before as well too, but it is targeted to grade five. OK, 
Okay. And but it's, uh, sorry, Roland, it's grade three and grade five. You said grade four and five. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Grade three I'm and sorry. five for virtual. Sorry, it's grade three and five, correct. So that leads into the next question, will there be a grade four? <laughs> so, so it's a great question. Um, it, uh, the one we're talking about, uh, for January is actually for grades three and grade five. We actually have grade four in person. We're just not offering it at this time uh, virtually, uh, but we may in the future, no no guarantees, but there's only grade three uh, and grade five. And again, just like the grade six question, um, a grade four could, especially based on their experience, could readily join our grade three class as well, and they have. But again, be very aware and want to be very clear, it is targeted for grade three students, okay? Um, is there a skill test for entry? prerequisite learning outcomes. Um, I don't believe there is for grade three. Uh, grade five, uh, Ms. Langan or Mr. Dagger, is there? There is? Okay. Uh, there, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Ms. Langan. Um, there is no test that they need to do, but there are some prerequisites in order to join grade five um, because there are quite a few students who have done our grade three and our grade four program. And unfortunately, since technology and coding is not taught in their day schools or the regular schools, when they join in in grade five um, and they're joining in with students who have done two other years of it, there is quite of a, of a divide, a gap. Um, so we just ask that <clears throat> the students when they join in on grade five, that they at least have some fundamental knowledge of coding. Um, and we have a list of it, which we can send to you as well if you're interested. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, so when does this semester start? So that's great. Another good question. Uh, the semester starts Tuesday, January 11th for grade five, and I believe it's slotted at uh, 630. So that's the first class. Uh, we are running 22 weeks and the tuition would be there's they would be broken up for by two payments. So the first semester would be six hundred twenty three dollars and eight cents for this is for one student and it would be $900 for the remainder of the year, uh, which would start um, the week of week 27, which is the week of March 27th, and then that would continue on till June, middle end of June. Okay. Uh, will this recording be available for later viewing? I believe so. I think we could put it some, Ms. Slangen, could we put it somewhere? Uh, I, I don't sorry, I don't know that we'll have to check in with the marketing and communications yeah. and, and find out um, what we can do afterwards. We will, we will try. Yeah, we'll we'll do our best, uh, but uh, I'll note it here and then we'll we'll see if we can get it to you. We'll post it somewhere or link somewhere. OK, uh, how do you do that online? So Mr. Dagger, I think that happened when you were doing the, the SOS. So you might want to explain how we plan to do our Arduino online. Yes, absolutely. So um, online, there is a simulator for the Arduino uh, that we, we use a website called Tinkercad and it allows us to program the Arduino just like we do in real life. Um, and they have breadboards and different components online. Now, if you want to do it in person as well and have the hand-on experience, because I know a lot of uh, a lot of people like to have it physically in their hand, uh, you are more than welcome to buy the Arduino. I think it's about around $30. Um, and you can just let us know, and we'll let you know what components you could also buy along with it. So that way you could practice uh, in real life as well, uh, but it is not a it's not necessary uh, because we are planning to do the emulator online, the virtual part. OK, thank you, Mr. It's great. So yeah, if you're still not clear, please let us know so uh, we can gladly uh, take take any other questions regarding the Arduino and the hardware. OK, um, will there be in person class eventually? So. Grade five, we actually already have in-person classes, uh, uh, but we, we really want to offer this because of just in, in light of the current environment we're in, we, we know that a lot of people are really interested and you know, we don't, it's not available in all locations as a pilot program. It's only available in a couple locations in Toronto. So we want to extend this out. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of people inquired about it. Will there be continuation after 22 sessions? Well, it ends at the end of our school year. Um, so. Uh, there, it, I don't think anything would run into the summer. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dagger or Ms. Langan. Um, it would have to restart uh, the next grade. Well, I don't know if we have grade six next year. That's in the question, but in September when our school year starts again. Okay. Uh, how many students per class? I believe the max number of students. It'll be 20 for online. It'll be 20. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my son's in grade four. When do you think he joins for technology? Do you think he can catch up? 
So in grade four, again, this might be a question for Ms. Pusab or, or, or Ms. Langan. Uh, she, I, I think he can join grade three. Um, we have grade four in person, but for virtually online, he probably would be uh, quite, he probably would fit quite nicely in grade three, especially he doesn't have uh, much background technology. So they would require some effort on both um, the parents and, and your, your son, the child, to put in some effort to catch up as well. Okay. Uh, and I think that's oh when is the registration open? It's it's already open, so you can reach out to the re, uh, registration team, the admissions team, and then we can get you signed up for that one. Um, is there a grade four session starting January? Uh, no, there is not. Sorry, there's only grade three and grade five virtually. Okay. Yeah. And sorry. There's uh, another question just asking why only for grade three and grade five, but oh. no online course for grade four. So. Um, these all of the spirit of technology as well as our spirit of English programs that we offer they are pilot classes so they are very very new and they're still under development we are testing them as we create them um, and so the teachers who are teaching all of these classes they're also developing the curriculum and we have a few other classes in person right now and just simply we just can't <laughs> do that many classes unfortunately while also developing curriculum um so that that that's the reason why we're only doing those for now okay. yes there are tests um and exams well one one end of year exam okay there's um there's a couple hands up i'm gonna turn on the mic i think the first one i have here is uh, uh zo i hope i didn't don't mess up this name as a zoe Can you hear, can you speak up? I'm not sure if the audio is going through a lot of how mic. They might not be able to unmute. Hi there, can you oh, hear me? Yeah, she's there. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Um, okay, so um, earlier you mentioned that um, if a child is new, so my son is in grade five, he's very interested. He doesn't have a technology background but he is in the spirit of math program. So if we were to look at the requirements, if he doesn't meet them, how would we achieve them for him to be eligible to um, enroll in the program? So this, you said for grade five? Grade five, that's right. Uh, so we could suggest some sites that you can use to to, to basically obtain that. Um, I guess we would also just, it would be easier, I think, if we had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with you and your child as well, just to sort of see where they're at and see how quickly they are picking the the sort of the concepts up as well because I think it depends on a child to child basis. Um, so I don't really have a, a, a straightforward answer or black and white answer for you unfortunately right now. I think that would be something that we would need to d discuss in more detail and just see sort of what the level is that your your child is at and how quickly do we think that they could pick up and then we could also provide some resources to to get help them get up there. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you Zoe. All right, um, next up is uh, D. I'm going to. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. Hi, OK, sorry. I was the one that asked the question about what happens after the 22 sessions. And what I was referring to is, um, say they complete this session, where would they go next with this? Or is it like done after these 22 classes? I just, I was, I know, are you still developing a grade six program or you're not sure? Um. <laughs> So we are hoping to, um, that, that is the plan for September, but the, the summer would still be off just as the regular program. Yeah, so there's a, there's a chance that it could like, might not continue. Like this could be just like 22 sessions as a one-off for the grade five and not um, grade six. For, yeah, I mean, there'll definitely be another grade five next year, but grade six, there's, there's a more likely chance that we will have it than not have it. I would say okay. I just don't want to say 100%, but it's definitely more than 50%. Okay. But, but we do want to be transparent. Like it might, like it really depends, like how the year goes. And assuming we, there is a chance that we might not. We don't want to mislead you and promise you. But our goal is to have a grade six. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say that one, and then uh, Han Ching, I believe. Um, turn on your mic. You can speak up. I think it might work. Do you have a question? Han Ching? Yes, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. I just, I, yeah. I just like try to unmute myself. Yes, first question. I'm thinking you are using Python, right, to for this uh, spirit of technology as a basic. Are you is that Python? The, the code you just show me is it from the from the from which I mean which 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 uh, application are you using for the, oh. for the coding course? I see, I see. She's, it's not it's not Python. It's actually Arduino. Is it Python and Arduino, Mr. Dagger? No, it's, it's not. It's so um, in grade five we use Arduino to program. Uh, uh -huh. And what I showed you right now was the Ardu what we call the Arduino IDE, and it just allows us to program and develop in Arduino and upload our code to the microcontroller itself. This this thing right here. Yes. Uh, the students submit their code to a OneDrive classroom notebook, so. They don't have to physically write out the code after they <laughs> type it out on their on their computer. So they'll just copy and paste their code and post it to their OneDrive and the OneDrive, or sorry, not OneDrive, the OneNote, and they're able to access it in future lessons as well. So they can always refer back to the code because one of the major things in programming is being able to come back to your old programs and see how you did something a certain way. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yes, because uh, like my son has is in grade four. So as you just said, you may have a, a in person class in, but it really depends. It's not hundred percent sure, right? For grade four students. So in we we currently do have in person classes for grade four. We don't have a plan for an online class in grade four. I our, see. Our grade four class is uh, there's one in our head office in uh, Toronto. Uh, your oh, it's in Toronto, Toronto, but we are in Ottawa, so I guess there is nothing we right. can do. As you said, like if he has no background, maybe we can join the grade three class for now, right? Yes, that is an option. OK, so instead of grade five, because uh, I it, do have some background in programming, so I'm right. not quite sure if it's, that's going to be hard for. I don't know which one. I mean, there is no, no nothing for grade four, so either we go grade three or we go grade five. So which one do you think could be the best for him then? It really depends on his strength and what he already knows. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, if it's starting from scratch, I think grade three is a better option. OK, sure. And I think similar to what Ms. Langan said, maybe this is a, something good for a one on one discussion with yourself and your son to see, uh, you know, how quickly he adapts and absorbs and we can probably take a look there and advise further. Of course, but how should I how to schedule this one to one one to one discussion? Oh, you can contact uh, contact myself or any one of us as well and or the admissions team we will coordinate okay. that. With you. Yeah, okay. you can post a message here. Yeah, I'll note it down as well, too. <clears throat> OK, thank you so much. OK, thank you very much, everyone. Um, we're going to move on and thank you for your time. Um, thank you, Mr. Dagger. Thank you, Ms. Langan. Uh, we're going to move on to Ms. Busab. She's going to present the grade three uh, curriculum and content. Sorry, Mr. Sang, just I think there's one more question in the chat. I just want to uh, address it. Oh, before we oh yeah, please. Yeah, go go ahead. Uh, so it says my kid is in grade four, but have, has a good coding background. Uh, let me know if you could join grade five class. Uh, like I uh, like we mentioned to the other parents beforehand, uh, this is something that uh, we could discuss probably on our one on one, so that we could see uh, the skill level of your of your child. So that way we could assess whether or not they should go in grade four or five. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, so. So I welcome everyone. You, you can, if you are interested in grade five, you're welcome to to stay for the grade three one as well. But we're going to start ahead with the uh, the grade three uh, presentation. Um, so as mentioned prior, Mr. Dagger went through this. Uh, we will be going through the curriculum overview, the drills, uh, different problem solving questions, uh, core content, the independent assignments that we give out to the grade threes, and we'll also go over micro bit. And I have the micro bit here and then we'll go over that a little bit later. I'll show everyone an example of that. Um, this was also reviewed the, t the reasons for enrolling in Spirit of Technology, so I won't uh, go through these bullet points again. For the grade three overview, uh, similar to the grade five, there are drills, but we go we go to uh, we do typing drills, so these are uh, texts on the screen and the students write a try to type as quickly as they can each week and try to beat their score 
every week. We also do binary drills, and I'll show you an example in the following uh, slide. And we also teach them syntax, how to pr properly code in Python. We also do problem solving questions, so we use different functions. Um, we do coding with circuitry, so open and closed circuits. We teach them about loops in coding, and then we go specifically and teach them about while and for loops. Um, for the core content, we go over a section called Techie Talk. So this is a part of the lesson where the students learn a new tech word each week. It just builds up on their vocabulary. They learn new things. Um, variables, as mentioned before, we learn about Boolean logic, uh, syntax, how to appropriately, appropriately code in Python so there are no errors. And then we do teach them about data and error types in Python as well. Uh, we also have independent assignments. We have two of them. Uh, Mighty Makers is a research assignment where they have to go on their own and do research online and complete the questions that are given to them. And it has to do with uh, all tech background, uh, techy tech uh, questions. And then we also have a PowerPoint assignment. The PowerPoint assignment is they choose a techy talk word that they learned um, from their lesson. So it would be from lessons, let's say, 1 to 15, for example. They, they can pick anyone they want and do research and um, present a PowerPoint to their classmates. So it also builds their communication skills, their presentation skills, and their research sk skills as well. Uh, for the grade three drills, so an example on the right side over here, this is a binary drill. So this is uh, using zeros and ones, so computer language, and students learn how to convert from base 10 numbers to base two numbers in five minutes. We give them a five minute um, timer. And the goal of this or the purpose is that you're supposed to finish all of these uh, squares before the five minutes runs out. And it also, it gets the students um, kind of to compete with themselves in trying to beat their score from the prior week. And an example, um, they'd have to convert one one zero 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 one zero zero to decimal, which would be one ninety six, and then they would continue all the way down the rows. And the goal is to finish the whole the whole block. And for the typing drills, again, a text is given um, on an online system, and they have to type as quickly as they can with ma making the least amount of errors possible. And at the end, it gives them a score, and the students try to beat that score each week. Um, and then an example problem in a lesson, this is a functions example. So we'd give them the word problem and then as a class, uh, we would try to solve the question together. And as you can see down here, there are kind of uh, little hints and tips on what to fill the lines of code with. We try, uh, we try to avoid giving the students the answers right away or telling them what to write for the code. We try to get them to logically think of what the best answer is instead of providing them with the answer. So for example, here line one, two, and three, assign the correct value to each sibling as a variable name. Then we would kind of work with the students and get them to tell us the teachers what they would write as the code for each line. And we guide them through these questions as we go as a class. And then there's always a practice question they do at their desks later on and they can work with a classmate so it encourages a group work uh, improves um, communication skills as well uh, the PowerPoint assignment as mentioned before this will this allows students to practice their PowerPoint skills by creating a presentation they can use the techie talk words that they learned from the lessons uh, prior to assigning this assignment and then they will present it in front of the teacher and their classmates. Um, they basically have to research technology inventions from the techie talk words that are provided in class. They have to identify which invention they like best that relates to that techie talk word. And then they have to imagine how their presentation would look like. So it also builds on their creativity skills. And they also have to think about how to um, sort of teach it to the teacher and to their classmates, assuming they don't know anything about the techie talk word that they did choose. 
And also, um, at the end, we ask each of the students, each of their classmates, what the presenter could improve on, what they did well, etc. So then th they know what they did, um, what they did well and what they did poorly on, so they can improve in further or future uh, assignments. And then, as mentioned prior as well, microbit. So we work with this microcontroller, if everyone can see this. And we can code this, as we can see here, I put an example on the side. So we present this in the class. Um, this is the physical copy, obviously, but we also have an online coder. I believe I have it open here. I can show an example. So this is the online coder. Um, it's the same as this. It just it has different coding versus this one. This specific one has a library, so it's uh, built in code that has specific images so we can actually pick pictures from a library and we can code them on this micro bit. So if I plug this in, let me just give me one second. Let's plug this in. So if we plug this in, it'll start flashing like this. And then. Uh oh. Let's go back to the site. Let's start again. So if we go to this website. And then we teach them this, we teach them all of this coding in class, so we teach them to erase this coding because it's unnecessary. Um, and then we teach them also how to pick their own images and put them on this micro bit. So all of this coding, all of these words would be explained in class. So for example, and then we connect it. Oh, it's not working, Why? So we connect, pair it, okay. And then it should start flashing. And then let's say we want a heart. So if we want a heart on the screen, on the LEDs, we type in heart and it has to be capital letters and then this is all syntax. We also teach this in the class and then we click flash. And then a heart shows up. And you can also switch it. You can pick any photo from the library, so you can pick skull is in the library, so let's write skull. And then you click flash. And then a skull shows up on the LED. Another example is house and so on and so forth. There are a hundred pictures you can choose from, but we just try to play around and show the kids that you can code and show a different picture on the LED. And we also teach them that you can make your own, um, you can have your own picture, so it does not have to be strictly from the micro bits uh, library of photos. And we teach them how to do that with the um, with numbers similar to binary, but we use nines and zeros instead of ones and zeros. Uh, after yeah. the curriculum of grade three, I think it might be better, like suit to my son at grade four better. But my question is, if he joins this uh, grade three uh, speed of math technology class online, what's going to be the next step? Because they do have the gap between the grade three and the grade five, right? Because there's no grade four class for him in between. <laughs> so what do you suggest uh, he can do? Uh, so this course will go until the end of this school year. And just because we don't have virtual grade four right now doesn't necessarily mean we won't have it for September. Um, I don't know right now, but we do have a grade four course. It's just that we're not offering it virtually starting in January. OK, but in September he's going to be grade five. So do you think he can skip the grade four or get into? I mean, it's still like a little bit confused <laughs> here. Yeah, I guess so of course he, we joined he, going the class late, so like yeah. anything who could help him to catch up the regular grade could be useful for me, like the plan. Because I if I if I like like the person just answer ask a question after grade five, what's going to be the next? Because whenever you're joining something, you want some like continuity. You don't want to only one semester or two semester. You want to just keep going, right? So what is going to be the to be the pathway 
after this grade three, then September he's grade five, but he needs to be in grade four. It's just so like. He wouldn't need to be in grade four um, since he would be at the grade, like he would be technically in grade five. Um, so that, that's not a problem. That's something that we can definitely figure out together. OK, sure. Yeah, thank you. And just one more question. What is a when is going to be this grade three class? Because the grade five is is on Tuesday, so. Um, so the grade three class is going to be Monday at 430 and the first class starts on uh, Monday, January 10th. OK, sure. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. OK, anybody else? All right. Well, thank you everyone for your time. Again, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're going to try to download this uh, this webinar as well. Let um, me put on YouTube or some sort of medium and we'll send that out as a follow up to everyone as well. Again, feel free to reach out uh, for those folks that want to schedule the one on one or you want to register. I think uh, Miss Langan posted a. Email, yes, and the number on there that you can reach out to. And or and or you might hear from uh, some of our team members as well too as a follow-up. Okay, thanks again, everyone. Have a great evening. Thanks for joining thanks, us. Everyone.